Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be continuing with our shell script tutorials and today we're actually going to be looking at a tool called grep. It is not built into your shell. It's not part of bash, which is what we're primarily looking at. It's an external tool, but it's a common, it's one of those core tools that's on pretty much all systems. If you have even a small little device like a router or modem and you have a shell on it and things only got like eight megabytes of hard drive space, it probably has grep on there. Grep is a tool you will use all the time in your shell commands. So it does a lot. I'm gonna show you the very basics, but in general, it just it grabs things. It looks for uh, matches in files and returns them for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. I am in an empty directory here. If you remember, ls will show you, will list what's in your directory. I have nothing in this directory. Uh, I need to create a file. Now you can use your text editor. I like using Vim uh, and I will do some videos in Vim in the future, but use whatever text editor you're comfortable with. But I'm gonna show you a cheap little trick here. Uh, we learned about the cat command, which will show you what's inside a file. We'll concatenate files together. But if you say cat and then you use your greater than symbol, you remember that in previous videos we worked with this and when you use that, it would take the output of one command and put it into a file. So I can call this um, file.txt for text, right? When I hit enter, it doesn't bring me to a prompt. The uh, cursor is just kind of there. So what I can start doing is I can type stuff like, my name is Chris, your name is John, banana, this is fun, let's get going. I'll hit enter, I'm on a blank line here, I'll hit control D. I just used cat as a, what they will say, poor man's text editor. If I list out files now, you see that I have a file here called file.txt, which is what we created right here. If I use cat now to show what's in that file, you'll see everything we just typed. Now, if I wanted to add a line, I can do the cat command, if I was to do this command again, it would overwrite that file. But instead of overwriting it, we're going to give it two greater than symbols, which means append, add to the end of this file. Now, if I type something like berry and blueberry, and then again, to finish it off, we hit control D. Now, if I was to cat out what's in that file, we can see that we've added to the end of that file, berry and blueberry. Now I can hit control L, or I can type clear to clear my screen. I am still in that same directory and we have that file. So what grep will do for us, we're going to search for stuff. So again, if I look at what's in this file, you can see that there's multiple lines. I'm going to go ahead and grab any line that has the word Chris in it. So I'm going to grep for Chris. And also on most Linux systems, if you want to copy something, the easiest way in the terminal is just to highlight it and then on your mouse center click, which if you have a wheel is just clicking the wheel down and that will paste whatever you have recently highlighted, the last thing you've highlighted. Now I'm gonna say grep Chris and then I gotta give it what I wanna grep through. We're gonna look at that file and it will return only the lines that have Chris. If I want, and again, I can go up and down arrows to go through previous commands. I am gonna go back here and I'm gonna say only show lines with the word is, great. So now we've learned how to look for lines with matches. Let's say I want to find all the lines that have uh, the word is on it and the word Chris, not necessarily next to each other. Well, I can always pipe the output of any command into grep. So I say the pipe symbol, which is shift, and on most keyboards, it's going to be, I don't wanna say most keyboards because keyboards are different around the world, but on a standard QWERTY keyboard is shift and the key that's right above your enter key. Uh, and it's that straight up and down line. Now I can type grep and I can type in Chris. And now it's gonna search for lines that have is in it. And then it's gonna search for lines from that output that have Chris and it will only return that line, which is only one line that has Chris in it. So if I was to cat and append to my file, and again, I can start typing a file name. I can hit tab and it will auto complete for me. So you don't have to type out the whole file name. I can type in Chris is cool. Well, that still has Chris in it. Let's just go Chris, or let's do films by. Oh, I just realized this is a bad example because the word is is in my name. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll still do that. And then we'll do, do John Smith. And then again, 
to the end, control D. Now if I cat out what's in file, we have all these lines here. Again, control L will clear the screen. Up arrow to go through our previous commands. Let's look for lines that have the word John on them. We have two, but let's say I only want lines that have John is and not necessarily in that order. Well, I can say grep is. Now let's say I want to find lines that have John Smith. Well, what I, I mean, we don't want to do this necessarily because let's add something to the bottom of our, our file. So I'm going to say Terry Smith. Again, control D. I can show you what's in that file. Now up arrow. If I was to do this, I'm going to get lines that have just John Smith, but again, bad example <laughs> for what I was trying to do. If we uh, add another line to our file, John is a Smith. How about that? Control D. Now we can grep for John and Smith and we'll get both the lines, but let's say we just want the line that says John Smith. Well, since there's space in there, what we can do uh, is put this in quotations with Smith. And even if you don't, if you, even if it's only word, word, one word, it's good practice, in my opinion, to put things in quotations, strings in quotations. Now, let's say I want to find all lines that say John and all lines that say Chris. Well, if I do this, I get lines that say John. What I can do is add an E here, which says, hey, I'm looking for the next expression. Well, we can add multiple expressions, so dash E, and I can say Chris. Now it's returning lines that have John and Chris, as opposed to doing something like this and then grepping for Chris. Now I'm going to get nothing because I'm not getting any lines that have both John and Chris on it. So here we're getting lines that have either John or Chris, and here I'm getting lines that have John and Chris on the same line. Now, by default, grep is case sensitive. So let's go ahead and cat and add into our file text. I'll just say John is also cool. <laughs> Control D. Now, again, I can cat out that file. And you can see we have John is cool. And I can grep for John from file. And you can see. I got John, but only John's with capital J's. If I come back here and make this lowercase j, it's going to show the lines that have John with a lowercase j. Well, if we want both, we can say dash I, which means case insensitive. Ignore the case. Now it's going to re return all lines that have the word John on it, even if it's lowercase or uppercase. And it doesn't matter where those cases are. You can have the whole word capitalized or whole word lowercase. This is going to ignore cases all together. And again, grep does a lot of things, but I'm going to show you just one more, one or two more things. Let's say we want lines that don't have John on it. Okay, we want all lines that don't have John. I'll do V here. Now it's going to return all lines that don't have John with a lowercase j. See, so we still get lines with John with a capital J. If we do this, we'll get lines that have John all lines that don't have John with a capital J. So we still have the lowercase John here. Now, if I can do this, I can do, say, case insensitive. So don't look at the case. And show V means the inverse of this. So now we're getting all lines that don't have John in it. And we're not modifying the file at all here, right? So if I cat out file, you can see all that stuff still in there. But if I wanted to save the output of that, I can create a new file. I'll call it file2.txt. And again, the extension is just for you. It's a text file, regardless of whether you have that on there or not. Now I can list out. You can see I have two files. I can cat file.txt. And I can cat file2.txt. So we're learning a lot with grep. And this is, this is a great thing. Again, now a lot of people will do something like, file.txt and then put that into grep and then grep for John. And that works. Uh, and there's not, not a problem with doing that when you're working at the shell. When you're writing a script, you, you probably don't want to do that. It's preferred to do the uh, grep John and the file. Why is that? Well, it's one less command. It's one less process to run. Um, but it's good to know that you can pipe because you might may end up piping. It's, it's not a big deal. Some people will make a big deal about it. It's just one less process and if you're looping through a lot of things that can save you time if you leave out 
this extra command. But when you're working at the shell, it, lots of times you're just stringing along, you're running one command, seeing the output. Okay, now I'm going to pipe. It's, it, it'd be silly to go back. Like if I was to, you know, cat out file.txt and then go, oh, okay, now I want to go find Chris. Now I'm going to type a whole new command. Well, no, it's, it's quicker just to go up, grep, Chris, right? And then, oh, I, I want lines to have cool. I'm going to go grep, cool. So if, t if you're working at the shell to go like this and go, oh, okay, now I'm going to go back and rewrite this, it's, it's, it's a matter of opinion. It is more efficient not to pipe as many times as you can, but it's also the power of the shell is piping. But just be aware of that, because if you do cat and then grep, and that's all you're doing, people will give you a hard time. Uh, I won't give you a hard time. I might mention to you it's better if you don't. So don't take it. <laughs> you know, if you come and ask me a question and I see that you're doing that, I'm going to recommend that you don't. But some people will just jump down your throat about it and just don't worry about it. People who do that, uh, again, take advice as advice. Ignore people who are mean. But that is just a quick look at the grep command. Now, again, this is the grep command. I should also mention there are lots of different versions of grep. There's pgrep, egrep, and they all work a little different. And in fact, the when you run grep on your machine, it may not just be regular grep. It might be pgrep or egrep and or some other version of grep. And there are differences, but in the 18 years that I've been using Linux and I've been use, writing shell scripts, I can't think of a time where I've ever had an issue where... I'm working with grep and it doesn't work like I think it does. And there can be, there definitely can be, but just be aware of that because some people might give you again a hard time if you say grep, but you're actually using, let me let me see something. So there's a which command, there's a little bonus here. If I say grep, it's gonna tell me what where my grep command is. And if I list out uh, and list with dash LHA, this is gonna list it with some more information. And right here it's sometimes things will be alias pointing. So I might have my grep command, but it might be pointing at another file. So I was just looking to see if my grep was pointing to another file. Um, but that's all I have for you today. We're going to be using grep in a future video. That's why I wanted to touch on it today. And it is a tool because when you're working with shell scripts, you are going to get the output of commands regularly and you only want parts of those commands. So or the outputs. So you're going to use grep a lot or looking through files. It is one of the most common tools and I just wanted to show you the basics of it. And it can get complex where people start using regular expressions, which are very powerful, but that's a whole nother topic. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Check out all the links in the description of this video because there's ways to support me. I have Patreon, PayPal, Libre Pay, Pay, blah, 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 buy me a coffee. I would love support. If not, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, I hope that you have a great day.